Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here, how are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to a special review for Slayer guitarist Kerry King and his debut solo album, From Hell I Rise. Uh, amazing album, I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it. As I said, debut solo album just released on Friday, May 17th of 2024. It has been nine years since we've gotten new music from Kerry King or Slayer and here it is. So I'm gonna break it all down, I'll talk to you about it, do a full unboxing. And we'll get into it in just a bit. But before we start, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also, leave a comment, hit like. All those things help support my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, if you turn on notifications, you're going to stay up to date on everything going on in the world of music, just like this, with a special review for the brand new Carrie King from Hell I Rise album. So, Carrie you know, with Slayer, helped form the band back in 1981. I mean, that's quite a ways back and released their debut album, Show No Mercy, in 1983. And along the way, of course, spearheading the whole thrash metal movement, but I think even more importantly, really helping to define the subgenre of speed metal. And along the way, they also were considered part of the big four of thrash for their contributions to the overall movement and sound and development, technique, that sort of stuff, along with the bands Anthrax, Megadeth, and Metallica, which in 2010, they finally all played shows together, went out and did some stadium shows under the banner of the big four. In all, Slayers released 12 studio albums, including their final album, the one I was just talking about, Repentless, that came out in 2015. So, nine years since we've gotten Slayer music or music with Kerry King. In 2020, Kerry King finally comes out and says that he will continue to tour and record new music under the banner of Slayer. However, it's taken four years to get to this point where we can talk about this brand new album, and man, has it taken a long time to get here. But we're finally here, and what's interesting is, now that it's been that long, we actually have the return of Slayer happening at the same time. They've announced three festival dates. So instead of saying former Slayer guitarist, we are saying Slayer guitarist, because Kerry King and the band have reunited for those three festival dates at least, and we'll have to wait and see what comes from that going forward. So this brings us to the new album from Hell I Rise debut solo album featuring 13 studio tracks clocking in at 46 minutes. What I like about that is that actually none of the songs stick around too long. I don't get tired of them, so I'm not worn out. They don't overstay their welcome on it. Uh, you know, some of the Slayer albums are a lot longer. Some of the songs are a lot longer. These, I think, were at the perfect uh, length, each one of them, which, you know, maybe sits around four and a half minutes, give or take, for the songs. I didn't look at all the times, but that was just sort of the feeling of it going through the album that at about the point where I was thinking about, oh, what's going to be the next one? The song is ending and the next one was starting up. Not to say that I was getting tired of anything. That was just kind of a cool way that the album really moves through uh, at a good pace on here. Now, despite the album itself being released under Kerry King's name, so a solo album, Kerry says this is in fact a band, this, these are his guys, uh, this is who he will move forward with, and they are part of this until they don't want to be part of it. And so, of course, we got Kerry King on guitar. Phil DeMell is on second guitar, and he comes from Violence, Machine Head. He even toured with Slayer, filling in for Jeff Hanneman at one point. Kyle Sanders is on bass from Hell Yeah. We got Mark Osagunda on vocals from Death Angel, and he does a fantastic job. And then what's really cool is we have Paul Basta on drums from Slayer. And so along with Paul, with Carrie and Paul, two of the most recognizable defining aspects of what made Slayer Slayer, in my opinion, when you heard those drums roar in or you heard, of course, the uh, thrash, the, the speed of those guitars rip onto a song, you knew it was Slayer. Of course, vocals do that as well, but I just really felt like it was pretty cool to get two of those classic elements continuing on in this release here. Uh, for me, the album picks up right where Slayer left off, 2015 or 2019, when the band decided to retire, wherever you kind of consider it. This album sounds like Slayer continuing, and 
Kerry King has said exactly that. If he were still in Slayer, writing for a new album, that's what this would have been. He wrote this as, quote, the next Slayer album, even though it was not, uh, so that that's what we could expect with it. Again, I think that's really cool. So the only real missing element here, we have the style, we have the type, we have the drums, we have the guitar, is Tom Araya's vocals on this. But I gotta say that Mark Osagunda does an amazing job. I mean, really coming in and singing in that style and vein and the way that Tom Araya did to the point that I don't really miss any of that. For me, knowing that I can't have new Slayer music, this checks all the boxes in every way. Um, so I'm very happy with this. My only kind of complaint on this would be that it came out under the Kerry King name instead of a band name. So as much as Kerry has talked about this being a new band. These guys are part of this. This is not just Kerry King. I think it should have been a band name and it sounds so amazing uh, that I don't want to just call it a Kerry King solo album. It's not him just shredding on guitar or something like that. There's so much more to it and each of the guys really brings something to the overall feel of this that I think there should be more to the name than just Kerry King. But outside of that, I can't complain, I'm loving this. Let's talk about some of the standout tracks that are on here. Track number one, the opening track, Diablo. This is a two minute instrumental. So not even maybe a real song or a full song on here, but and nothing too amazing guitar wise on it, but it's got a great build to it. And it really, really leads into the album, kicking the album off with track number two that rolls in on here. But I can totally see this being the song that opens up the shows. And so it really hypes me up for the album. And then when the album kicks in on number two, it's, you know, fantastic uphill from there the whole way. Track number four, Idle Hands. This was the first single and a really amazing song. I mean, I liked it when it came out. I loved it at that time. But I got to say, in hearing it, you know, with the context of this whole album, it's still a fantastic song. It's got all the hallmarks of Slayer music with it. And I think it was a great song for them to have chosen to release to introduce us to the album because of how many classic elements of Slayer are within that one track. Track five, uh, Trophies of the Tyrant. Uh, this one here is a little bit of a change of pace on it. It um, Instead of being, you know, the all-out thrash that we've been having on the previous tracks, this one is in more of a groove direction. It creates a nice break in the album, helping to, you know, make for a more interesting listen throughout. I really like songs that do that, that change up the pace a bit. Track 9, Toxic. Newest single and apparently video just released for this. The guitar riff at the beginning hooks me right in. I love it. Um, this one here perhaps might even be my favorite song. I'm still balancing out between this one. And the next song, Track 10, Two Fists. This one here changes up the pace again. Uh, a little bit different than that thrash attack that I was talking about. Um, got more of that groove element to it. And it's, again, just a nice change in pace. But this one here... And the previous track that I was talking about, Toxic, uh, those two, either one, could be my favorite tracks on the album. Just absolutely loving those. I have to say, there's not one song on here that I feel like skipping. Not one song that I don't like on it. They're all really, really good. Just these five really stood out to me. So let's take a look at this. All right, so there's the cover of it. In typical Slayer fashion, we got some kind of demon on there I really like. The logo that he has come up with the two uh, K's, the backwards and forwards, one together with the upside down cross carrying over that motif from Slayer in it. Back of the album with all the tracks on it. And of course, there's the spine on it. When we open it up, this is what we see here. We get that uh, logo with uh, the motif a little bit larger there on the CD. Pop out the disc here and you get it again under there. Let's take a look at the booklet. So again, album art. We just get in, we got lyrics that are in this thing. But uh, when we get to the middle of this, we get that art, which I think is far cooler than this art. And I kind of rather this part had been the album cover. I just think that looks really cool. It kind of looks like um, Kerry King with a crown on his head like that. But all in all, very cool. Just wondering why that was not the album art. Uh, you get more lyrics and stuff that are in here. But what... Uh, kind of bummed me out. There's absolutely no photos of the band or Kerry King and signed this. And I know they took them because there are promotional ones that were released uh, when the album was uh, being announced and doing interviews and things like that. So there's 
those out there, why they were not included within it, I don't know. I've noticed that. It seems to be a lot less uh, band photography, that sort of stuff inside albums. These days when it happens, it seems to be a much bigger thing, but we don't really get it here and just a little bit bummed about that part. So bottom line here, um, it's great to have Carrie King carrying on the torch of Slayer. I mean, if we can't have Slayer music, we're going to have Kerry King instead, then fantastic, fine by me, I'll take it. It is the next best thing. Everyone who's involved with this is uh, keeping that in mind, and I think they're really trying to live up to that legacy that uh, Kerry King built with Slayer, and the album itself really pulls it off in spades. This is a fantastic thing. It is not some secondary, watered-down version of Slayer. This is the continuation of Slayer, in my opinion, just under a different name, the name of Kerry King. Um, as I said, all the hallmarks of Slayer are on this album. Everyone is playing tremendously on it. It sounds great. Um, I have to say, you know, if you're a fan of Slayer, killer old school thrash, this album is for you. If you're just looking for some killer heavy metal, this album would be for you. It could be for old fans. It could be for new fans. It's one of those kind of albums that really crosses a lot of boundaries i would say so instead of it just being like i said secondary slayer for slayer fans this is a stupendous album if this come out back in the day the name carrie king would be as big as slayer in my opinion and there you go that is my review for the new carrie king from hell i rise album absolutely fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Certainly uh, leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts about the new uh, Carrie King album, the members that are on this, um, how it holds up to Slayer, all those great things, because this one here is uh, one for the ages, in my opinion, and certainly will be going on my uh, top 10 list at the end of the year. All right, everyone, take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.